Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to another scorching hot day here in Houston, Texas. Today we're out here taking a look at this 2008. It's a Honda Pilot. It's got the V6 3.5 liter engine. What the shop is telling me is that the customer is complaining that the engine is stumbling while it's sitting idle. It sounds a lot to me like it's got maybe an intermittent misfire. The way the engine is stuttering and stumbling. Now the shop is telling me that they have already tried to scan for trouble codes and there are no trouble codes stored in the engine computer. So there's no help as far as trouble codes. However, there are a few things that we can do using the scan tool in order to identify a misfiring cylinder. So let me take you guys inside the truck. I've already got the scan tool connected. Now I'll show you how we can identify a misfiring cylinder. All right, so we're inside the truck. I'm gonna go ahead and start this thing up. Now with this engine running, for the most part, it actually runs pretty good. It idles pretty well. If you guys take a look at the tachometer over here, you can see that our needle is not jumping up and down. And at the moment, I don't feel the misfire. Like I said, guys, this misfire is kind of intermittent. As the engine is idling and running, uh, you'll intermittently just kind of feel it hiccup a little bit. And right now, like I said, it's running pretty smooth. I'm waiting for it to start hiccuping. I think I just felt it right there. Yeah, right there, I felt it again. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Maybe you'll see the tachometer jump. I'm not sure if it'll show up on the tachometer here, but pay attention. It just hiccuped right now though i did not see the tachometer really move so yeah guys so unfortunately i'm not going to be able to show you guys the engine stumbling over the camera however i do have the scan tool connected so let me show you guys what we can do with that all right so today we're using the launch x431 pro 3s plus you guys have seen me use this scan tool plenty of times in my videos one of my favorite scan tools to use i wouldn't say i really have a favorite but uh, this has got to be one of my top ones i'm going to click on usa if you look here it shows a honda pilot 2008 so we're going to click on okay then i'm going to go into system selection and then we're going to select the PGMFI, which is our engine computer. That's what Honda likes to call it. Then if we go over here to fault code, I'll show you that we don't have any fault code stored. So let's try current DTCs. And you can see we have no trouble code. So we'll exit, go back into read fault code. Then we'll try to read intermittent DTCs and we'll see if we have anything there. And once again, you can see we don't have any trouble codes. So even though we don't have any trouble codes to give us direction, there is another thing we can do, and that is to go into the data stream. So we're gonna read data stream. And if we scroll down, you'll see that this scan tool gives us the ability to read misfires. Here we have cylinder number one, cylinder number two, cylinder number three, four, five, and six. So now that I have all six cylinders selected, I'm gonna hit okay. Then if you look here, you can see that we have all of our cylinders listed in numerical order. And already you can see which one here is counting. Cylinder number three is up to six misfires here, while all of the other ones are still at zero. Now, one other cool way we can do this is we can actually graph this to give us a visual. And so when I click on graph, we get this cool kind of layout of all of the cylinders. Again, we have cylinder number one, two, three, four, five, and six. And already you can see which cylinder is counting. We have cylinder number three up to 11 misfires. Again, guys, this is an intermittent misfire. As we're sitting here, the engine is idling. For the most part, it's running pretty good. However, every now and then the engine will hiccup and we can actually see them getting drawn up on the graph here. So every time the engine hiccups, you'll see a misfire counter here on number three. And so right now we're up to nine misfires. Now, one of the things I think we could do to make this misfire a little more prevalent is to actually put this thing in gear. So I've got my foot on the brake and I'm going to put it in reverse. And then we're gonna take a look at these misfire counters and we're gonna see if it starts to climb quicker. Yeah, there we go. We're up to seven again. There's eight, nine, 10. I feel it again. And then it just reset itself at 11. We'll see how high we can get this thing to climb. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I definitely feel it a lot more right now since we put the engine in gear. Check it out, we got up to 22, 23, and then it reset itself. So yeah, guys, we definitely have a misfire and it seems to be pretty specific to cylinder number three because all of the other cylinders are still at zero. So we now know that we have an issue with the misfiring cylinder number three. Now, as far as the possibilities, I mean, it's pretty likely that maybe we have a bad ignition coil. Typically with these single cylinder misfires that happen intermittently, usually have to do with the leak in the secondary ignition, especially when the misfire is more prevalent while it's under load. Again, in this case, we put this thing in gear. The vehicle is not moving. However, the act of putting the the transmission into gear does put a load on the engine and if we have a leak in the secondary where the spark is jumping from the boot to the wall in the spark plug hole that's what this seems like so let's go ahead and move under the hood and do a quick visual inspection where are you at there we go Ugh. All right, guys, so moving under the hood. Now, I did take a moment to look up the firing order or the cylinder layout for this engine. And the way this is numbered is over here on the backside of the engine, we have one, two, three. 
And then up here in the front, we have four, five, and six. So the cylinder number three that we want to focus on is going to be the one on the back side over here. So the first thing we need to do is remove this cover. And I think we have some clips down here that we can just turn. <clears throat> one, two, three. I think we can just lift this up. There we go. Now we have full view of the engine. And you guys can see the coils up here in the front that are really easy to get to. Unfortunately, the cylinder that we're looking for is the one on the back side, so a little more difficult to get to. However, it's not too bad. If we take a look at the ignition coil for cylinder number three, it's located right there. Turn my light on. There we go. This is our cylinder number three ignition coil. And so first of all, looking at it visually, we don't see any obvious signs of any damage to the wires. So I think the first thing we want to do is go ahead and pull this coil out so we can do a visual inspection. <laughs> and pull it out all right guys so we've got the ignition coil out and taking a look at the boot here um, i don't see any marks indicating that we had any spark jumping past the boot usually if we did we would have some type of carbon tracking maybe some burn marks however in this case this boot looks like it's in pretty good shape not to mention that i think this is a brand new coil check it out it's got the ngk logo on there so it looks like somebody recently replaced this ignition coil let me ask the shop owner if they change these all right guys so unfortunately the shop owner is tied up with a customer right now so i can't ask him any questions um, but i think what i want to try to do next is go ahead and pull the spark plug out so we can do a visual inspection <laughs> All right, guys, so we got the spark plug out and take a look at this. This plug actually looks brand new and it's a Denso Iridium. So this is a high quality plug. I'm pretty sure they tried to fix this problem by replacing the coil and the plug. However, they're still having an issue. If you take a look at the tip of the spark plug here, you can see that we do have some discoloration going on with this electrode. Almost looks like it's uh, been tinged from extreme heat. I don't know if that's showing up on the camera for you guys, but it definitely looks like the temperatures in the cylinder have been getting up pretty high. Yeah, so I'm starting to wonder if we have some type of misfire due to maybe a lean condition. However, it seems to be pretty specific to cylinder number three. So if we had a problem with cylinder number three going lean, we either have a problem with the bad fuel injector or a vacuum leak in the intake manifold gasket at the port for cylinder number three. Actually, I've even seen fuel injector O-rings cause a vacuum leak in just that one cylinder. So there are quite a few different possibilities as far as testing, what can we do? I mean, we could definitely do maybe an injector balance test and compare the injector from cylinder number three to the rest of the injectors see if maybe that injector is not flowing as much as the rest of them are or we could do a smoke test maybe smoke the intake see if we have a vacuum leak i think that might be a little bit easier to do especially because this design does not give you easy access to the fuel injectors they are all located underneath this big intake manifold and so doing an injector balance test on this vehicle can be pretty difficult all right guys so let me show you the setup over here as you can see i have my smoke machine today i'm using the mr car tool you guys may have seen this on my channel previously i did a full review if you have not checked that video out make sure you go back and watch it now over here what i went ahead and did was i pulled the intake tube from the air box over here i used the bladder supplied in the kit that comes with the smoke machine to block off the intake tube and feed smoke into it so now that i've got this thing fully pumped up and secured i'm gonna go ahead and turn the smoke machine on i don't know if that's showing up on the camera or not but we got smoke coming out of this hose now i'm gonna connect it to the end of this there we go now we'll just wait for the system to fill up with smoke Okay, so after a few minutes, our system is full of smoke. Now, unfortunately, I don't see any leak happening anywhere near the intake manifold gasket, though I will say it is very difficult to get down in here to see any leak. The only place I see smoke coming out of really 
is this EGR valve. There's a minimal amount of smoke coming out of here, which is probably normal. However, I really don't see any smoke coming from this side of the intake. I guess what I could try to do is maybe take my boroscope and feed the camera underneath. Maybe we can find a leak that way. So I've got my boroscope here. I'm gonna go ahead and stick the camera underneath the intake manifold. We'll see if we can get a visual here. All right, guys, so unfortunately, even with the camera, I don't see any vacuum leaks. Take a look at the screen here. You can see that we're looking right at the fuel injector for our number three cylinder, and it uh, looks pretty good. I don't see any smoke coming out of it. And if we back up a little bit, you can see the intake gasket for our intake port on cylinder number three, and we don't have any smoke coming out of there. All right, so it doesn't look like we have a leak in our intake manifold or in our fuel injector. And right now, I am running out of time because I am trying to beat the storm that we have coming right in behind us. Yeah, so you guys can see the rain cloud over there. I don't know if you heard that thunderclap, but we got a storm coming in, so I better hurry up and figure out something quick. All right, guys, so the next test I'm gonna do is something very basic, and very easy. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of Swaptronics. So I'm basically going to take this coil from the cylinder number six and swap it over to the coil that was on cylinder number three. Now, if I swap this coil over to cylinder number three and I take the coil that was in cylinder number three to begin with and put it into cylinder number six and we see that our misfire moves over to cylinder number six, then we know our problem is with this coil. Like I said, I initially thought we might've had an issue with our ignition coil. Um, however, seeing that these were brand new ignition coils, that kind of threw me off a little bit. I did get a chance to finally talk to the shop owner and what he told me was that they replaced these ignition coils about a year ago, along with the spark plugs. And so there is a possibility that we might just have a bad coil. Let's go ahead and pull this hose off for the smoke machine. And then we'll release this bladder and put this hose back on. Ugh. Come on. Are you too good for your home? <sighs> Come on. There we go. We'll start this thing up and take a look at the scan tool. We'll select our misfires. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hit OK. Man, this storm is coming in pretty hot. Hey, check this out, guys. Looky, looky here. Cylinder number six. Look how many misfire counters we have here. Let me go ahead and graph this so you guys can see it better. OK, so now you can see it a lot better. Here's our cylinder number six. And again, what we did was we took the coil from our cylinder number three and moved it over to cylinder number six. And we took the coil that was in cylinder number six and moved it over to cylinder number three. And now cylinder number six is misfiring and cylinder number three is no longer misfiring. What does that tell us? And that tells us that we have a bad coil, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this. This thing is getting up to uh, 40, 41, 42. Man, it's getting way up there. It's worse than it was when it was over here in cylinder number three, 45, 46. 48 it's about to hit 50 let's see if it hits 50 before the counter's over yep 52 53 54 55 56 57 58 60 61 up oh, and it reset at 61 there you have it guys we have a bad ignition coil all right guys well there you have it we have a bad ignition coil now i know i kind of got thrown for a loop there again i pulled the coil out it looked brand new i thought maybe it was still a good coil because I looked at the boot, I didn't see any problems with the boot, no carbon tracking, no signs of leak, no burn marks, nothing like that. However, when I took that coil and I moved it over to cylinder number one, or excuse me, cylinder number six, our misfire moved with the suspected ignition coil. So I'm gonna tell the shop owner he needs a new coil. That should fix the problem here. Anyways, guys, I gotta get out of here before the storm hits. All right, guys, well, there you have it. After replacing the ignition coil, the vehicle no longer had a misfire. However, there is something really important that I would like to mention. And that is that after the customer picked up the vehicle and drove it home, now the customer lives about an hour away from the shop. And when he got close to arriving to his house, the check engine light started flashing. Now he did say that he didn't notice any drivability problems with the vehicle while the check engine light was flashing. However, after they connected the scan tool, they actually had multiple misfire codes for multiple different cylinders. And so the customer drove the vehicle back to the shop and they called me back to come take a look at it. Now, when I got there and connected my scan tool, I read the trouble codes and I found that we had codes for misfires on pretty much every single cylinder. At that point, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty confused. I mean, the engine was running fine. When I read the misfire counters, we had no misfires at the moment. We didn't even have that intermittent misfire that we had before. The engine was running smooth. So after having no idea what to do next, I called up my buddy Oz from Oz Mechanics and I asked him if he ever ran across anything like this. And what he told me was that 
I should try doing a crank position relearn. Sure enough, I went into my scan tool and I found the function for the crank position relearn. There's also a function to clear it. So you need to clear it first and then do the relearn procedure. Then after doing that, the vehicle no longer threw any misfire codes. Luckily that procedure was available inside of the launch scan tool, the same one you saw me using in the video, and I was able to perform it easily. The funny thing is the following day, I got called out to a different shop for another Honda and that car also had ghost misfires. Well, initially it had a misfire and they repaired the misfire, except they kept getting reoccurring codes that showed the engine was misfiring even though there was no misfire. So with this experience fresh in my brain and my trusty launch scan tool handy, I did the crank position relearn procedure and that fixed the problem. No more ghost misfires. So anyways, if you guys are dealing with the Honda and you repaired a misfire or replaced a crankshaft position sensor or a camshaft position sensor and you find that you still have misfire codes, get yourself a capable scan tool that can do the crank position relearn. Now, if you guys are interested in the launch X431 Pro 3S Plus, I will leave the Amazon link down below where you can buy one and I've even got a discount code. Now, if you guys are Amazon Prime members, Amazon is actually running a special today and tomorrow, October the 11th and the 12th, early access for Prime members only, and you can get this tool for a serious discount. Now, if the X431 is a little out of your price range, check out the new Think Diag 2. You guys have seen me use the Think Diag before. This is the latest version of it. I've already been testing it. I've got a video coming soon where I'm using this, and let me tell you, I am blown away by the capabilities of this scan tool, especially for the price. This thing basically does everything that the launch does for a fraction of the price by utilizing your smartphone or your tablet. And this thing works with both Android and iOS. Again, if you are an Amazon Prime member, there's a special running today and tomorrow, October the 11th and October the 12th, where you can pick this thing up for super cheap. You can find the link in the description down below. So anyways, guys, at this point, I'm gonna end off the video. Like I always say, thank you guys for watching. I hope you found the video useful, informational, educational, entertaining. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.